Okay, in this video we're going to look at the following proposition which has to do with the number of solutions to a polynomial congruence. So let's see how it goes. So let's let n1 through nk be natural numbers that are mutually co-prime. So that means if you take the GCD of them all at once you get 1. Um, and uh, if you take the GCD of any two pairs of them you also get 1. So, and also let's suppose that uh, this polynomial congruence, f of x is congruent to 0 mod little n i has capital N i solutions. Then the conclusion is that this polynomial congruence, f of x is congruent to 0 mod this product n1 through n k has this product of big n1 through n k solutions. Okay, so before we look at a proof, let's look at an example of this in action. So let's consider the following polynomial. So let's consider the polynomial f of x equals x squared minus 3x minus 10. So as we can see, this thing factors like x minus 5, x plus 2, and z, which means there are two solutions NZ, like if we don't consider um, solutions congruent to anything. So now let's look at uh, solutions in Z2 and in Z3. So in, um, so in Z2, in other words, solutions to f of x is congruent to 0 mod 2. Good. So in this case, we can reduce this polynomial modulo 2, and we'll see that this is the same thing as x squared plus x is congruent to 0 mod 2. And notice that x equals 0 and x equals 1 is a solution to this. So 0 plus 0 is obviously 0, which is congruent to 0 mod 2, and then 1 plus 1 is 2, which is 0 mod 2. So that means x equals 0 and 1, these are solutions. Good. Now the next thing, let's look in z3. In other words, let's look at the equation f of x is congruent to 0 modulo 3. Okay, good. So in this setup, we can reduce the polynomial as follows. So uh, this is the same thing as x squared plus 2 is congruent to 0 mod 3. So let's look at that. So negative 3 is obviously congruent to 0 mod 3, so we can get rid of that. And then um, negative 10, uh, we can add 12 to it, which is 0 mod 3, and we get 2. So at negative 10 is congruent to 2 mod 3, so we can uh, reduce it as follows. And now we can just plug in all the numbers between 0 and 2 to check if they're solutions. So if we plug in 0 into here, we get 0 plus 2, so that's not congruent to 0 mod 3. Now if we pl plug in 1, we'll get 1 plus 2, and that's 3, which is congruent to 0 mod 3, so that means x equals 1 is a solution. And then next, if we plug in x equals 2, we get 4 plus 2, which is 6, which is 0 mod 3, so that means x equals 2 is also a solution. Okay, great. So now, let's look in z6. In other words, we want to look at the solutions to this congruent to 0 mod 6. So let's see what reduction we can do in this case. So in this case, we have x squared and negative 3x is going to be the same thing as plus 3x. And then finally, negative 10 is going to be the same thing as plus 2. So we can see that by adding 12, which is adding a multiple of 6. And so it's, this is congruent to 0 mod 6. So now if you look at the solutions here, notice that if you plug 1 into this, you get 1 plus 2 plus 3, so you get 6, so that means x equals 1 is a solution. And then also if you plug in 2, you'll see that you get 4 plus 6 is 10 plus 2 is 12, so 2 is a solution. And then likewise, 4 and 5 are also solutions. 
So let's see, if you plug in four, you get 16 plus two is 18 plus 12. So 18 and 12 are both zero mod six, so the whole thing is zero mod six. And then if you plug in five, you get 25 plus 15 is 40, plus two is 42, which is seven times six, so that's zero mod six. And then you can check that the other numbers are not solutions zero mod six. Well, there are only two left. They're zero and three. So let's look at this. In congruence to zero mod two, we had two solutions. Congruence to zero mod three, we had two solutions. Congruence to uh, zero mod six, we had four solutions, which is two times two. So we have some evidence that this proposition is true. And so now I'll clean up the board and we'll look at a proof of this pop proposition. Okay, so now that we've seen an example of this proposition in action, we'll look at a proof. So let's uh, start with that. So let's say for each i between 1 and k, let's let ai um, be a solution. So be such that f of ai is congruent to 0 mod ni. So in other words, it's a solution to this polynomial equation. Good. Now, notice that there are n1 up to nk such choices. Good. So now we somehow want to use the, all of these choices that we've made for these independent um, uh, uh, polynomial congruences to construct one for this polynomial congruence module of the product and then also show that this is all such um, solutions. Okay, good. So from here, we can consider the following. So now we'll consider the system of linear congruences given by x is congruent to ai mod n i for i from 1 to k. Okay, good. So now we can apply the Chinese remainder theorem to this. So apply the Chinese remainder theorem, which says that there is a solution to this that is unique modulo the product n1 through n k. And so, um, so this gets a unique solution um, mod this product n1 through nk which we'll call call it a good and so now uh, let's notice this so notice that f of a is congruent to f of a i which is congruent to zero mod n i and this is true for all i. Good. And so since f of a is congruent to 0 mod n i for all i, that tells us that f of a is a multiple of all of these n i's. But since f of a is a multiple of all these n i's, and all of these n i's are relatively prime, then that means it must be a multiple of their product. And so that means that if it's a multiple of their product, that means it's zero mod this product n1 through nk. Okay, good. So we've outlined a strategy of taking solutions for each of these polynomial congruences and building a solution for this new polynomial congruence. Now uh, I'll clean up the board and then we'll prove that this is indeed all of the solutions because we already have our target number of solutions. Okay, so now we'll approach this from the other direction. So let's suppose we have a solution. In other words, we suppose that f of a is congruent to zero mod this product n1 through nk. Good. So what that tells us is that n, n1 through nk divides f of a, but then since um, n1 through nk are relatively prime, that tells us that ni divides fa 
for some i between 0 and k, which tells us that a was a solution to f of x is congruent to 0 mod little n i. In other words, it was one of the solutions that we were working with originally, which that finishes the problem.